Kelly Sparta here with Spirit Sherpa Minis. So today we're going to talk about mantras, meditation, and trance. And you know that it seems like a lot, <laughs> but really it's all variations on a theme. Okay, so when we're talking about mantras or meditation or trance, really what we're talking about is ways of getting our head out of the way through creating a repetitive structure that allows your brain to go on hold. Uh, and so really what that means is uh, it's kind of a different form of meditation, uh, but it is a more active version, right? So if you are repeating mantras, you are holding a specific intention. And so that intention actually forms the foundation for the, the trance that you go into as part of the mantra work. And so the idea of a mantra is that you just do it over and over and over again, and that the words uh, take you into another state of being, right? And you can do this with chanting, you can do it with dancing, you can do the same you know, you could follow the rhythm of, of a drum and that can take you into a trance as well. Um, and these sorts of things are ways to separate your mind from your spirit, right? And so it allows you to put your mind on hold so that that constant la 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 that's going on in the back of your head all the time can be silenced or shunted aside, depending on whether you have an active uh, mental center or not. Um, Kathy has a really highly active mental center. And so she has to literally like sink down underneath her thoughts and just like watch them go by. Like she's on the bottom of the river and they're going by above her. Um, I don't have an active mental center, so I can actually get my brain to shut down completely and just be like, oh, Right, and Om is the most basic chant. It's the most basic uh, mantra sort of thing. So uh, a, a mantra is often uh, mantras are are things that you repeat. Um, you can use them as in 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 Western culture in the U.S. in particular, we use mantras sort of like personal mission statement. This is my personal mission statement, but that's not the framework that I'm talking about here. Uh, what I'm talking about is mantras as in uh, the, 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 um, the things that you chant in um, like kirtan, right? Or uh, chants that you do over and over again, right? Um, and so these allow you to do that. So like om mani padme ho is bring me peace now. Right now, you can say Om Mani Padme Ho, which is a lovely. There's something very lyrical and rhythmic about the words, uh, or you can say, "Bring me peace now, bring me peace now, bring me peace now, bring me peace now," and just repeat, repeat, repeat. These are not the same things as affirmations. Okay, not the same thing. An affirmation is is saying something that you know is not true as though it were true right and calling it into form through that statement of affirmation most people at the earlier stages of their spiritual process cannot do a decent affirmation and so i generally tell people to avoid affirmations mantras are intention setting bring me peace now right Bring me peace now, right? And you're, you're saying, this is what I want. I want peace. Now, problem <laughs> you may have with this is if you are not holding the energy of peace while you are stating that, then you are going to be holding the energy and manifesting the energy of not having that peace. So you have to be careful with these, right? Uh, because you're saying, bring me peace, which says I don't have it, right? So be very careful with the language that you use in your mantras and things like that. So this is why sometimes Om Mani Padme Ho might be better because then you're not thinking about that. You're just being with the energy. And again, if you go back to the episode on high magic versus low magic, 
this is definitely a high magic sort of thing where you're tapping into all the ways in which other people have had this chant for, for generations. And so you can just use it that way as well. So uh, basically what we're talking about here is how do you get to the state of no mind? And that's really what this is about is a state of no mind. And so why do you want to get there? Why, why do you want to get there? Well, that's a really good question. Why do you want to get there? So I would say that the reason you want to get there is because it gives you a place from which to connect to your higher self, to your guides, to your inner knowing, to your inner wisdom, to your body wisdom, to all the things that are not your mind. Because your mind is freaking loud, man, and it will just drown out everything else. And so it makes space for all of these other pieces of yourself to speak to you. So I do highly recommend that you find a uh, you find your way to that place of no mind. And, you know, that's where all the wisdom comes from. So uh, with that, I think that'll be it for this time. Please like and rate and subscribe and tell your friends. We really appreciate it when you tell your friends around here because that helps me a lot for getting the message out. Um, I am really on a mission to try and get everybody to be conversant in the spiritual metaphysical world so that they can more effectively impact their own personal outcomes. Uh, and any help you can give me in that regard by spreading the word, I so appreciate. Thanks so much for listening. I'll talk to you next time.